I've never had the privilege of playing Magnus Carlsen, and I probably never will, but if I did, and I got a position like the one Dimitri Andraken got in this recent Blitz game on chess.com, I'd be feeling pretty good. Here Andraken is a piece up in an endgame. He's rated over 3,000, and he should have every reason to believe that he's got this win in the bag. Yet somehow, within about 12 moves from this position, Magnus Carlsen not only equalizes the game, but actually ends up being the one to checkmate Andraken. Unbelievable. So let's take a look from the beginning and see how this all unfolded. Andraken with the white pieces begins with d4, and Magnus Carlsen plays the modern defense with g6, and we have knight f6, knight c3, d5, and Andraken pushes the pawn to e5 with an attack on the knight. Carlsen drops into e4. Most popular for white here would be to capture the knight, messing up black's pawns, or even dropping the knight back to e2. But Andraken instead goes for bishop to d3, increasing the pressure on e4, but allowing Carlsen to take on c3, doubling his pawns for not really any great reason. So in this position, Carlsen has succeeded in equalizing the game. White does not have really any opening advantage here. He plays c5, striking in the center. We have h3 from Andraken, presumably because he wants to play knight to f3 and doesn't want the knight to get pinned with bishop to g4. Okay, knight to c6, knight to f3. And now Carlsen resolves the central tension by playing c4, hitting the bishop, which drops back to e2, allowing Carlsen to put his bishop on f5, without it being captured and ruining his pawn structure. We have castles, and now a strange decision from Carlsen, e6. And I think a lot of you will immediately realize what the problem is with this move. This bishop is severely short on squares, which Andraken capitalizes on immediately with g4. The bishop can only go to e4, and now knight to g5, threatening f3, which will trap the bishop. Now if black wants to avoid losing a piece, he can play h6, allowing the knight to capture on e4, but after d takes e4, bishop takes c4, white's grabbed a pawn, black's got this really weak pawn here on e4, and this is a hopeless position. So Carlsen instead goes for h5. Maybe this was his whole idea, maybe he wants to open up this file here and he thinks the activity with the rook is going to compensate him for losing this bishop after it's trapped with the move f3. But this idea comes to nothing, and white is just totally winning here. Carlsen tries bishop to e7, attacking the knight with two pieces, but there's h4. He throws in queen to a5, hitting c3, but Andraken says, I can defend. I have time. This bishop's not going anywhere. He takes on g5, h takes g5, and then decides that his best route is to just grab the f-pawn with his bishop. And after bishop takes f3, black has one pawn for the lost piece. Not nearly enough compensation, despite the fact that he has h takes g4. Opening up the file here, there's bishop takes g4, rook to h7, defending the pawn from the rook here so that he can castle. But now king g2, just preparing to challenge the rook on the open file if necessary. Queen to a4, eyeing c2, we have queen to b1, Carlson castles long, now queen to b2. Maybe thinking about putting a rook behind the queen, you could be threatening mate in one. Carlsen doubles his rooks, and how many of you would play like Andraken does here and just instinctively play rook h1 to challenge the rooks, right? This is not the best move though, he actually missed a tactic here. Let me show you, or maybe you'd like to take a second and see what white's tactic is here. Andraken could have played rook takes f7, which of course threatens to take the pawn on b7 with the queen, which will end in checkmate. If you take that rook, there's going to be bishop takes e6 check and you're getting the rook back unless the rook goes to d7, but now you got bishop takes d7, king takes, queen takes b7 check, and after the king moves, there's e6, with a powerful passed pawn, threatening checkmate, totally lost for black. But in the game, we had rook to h1, all the rooks come off the board, and the players find themselves in an endgame, where Andraken simply has an extra bishop, Carlsen only has a pawn to show for it, now granted these bishops aren't great pieces because of the closed nature of the position, the knight is actually probably better than a bishop in this position, but this still is winning for white. And Andraken does a pretty good job of trying to convert the win for a while. Carlsen plays knight to e7, looking to possibly jump into f5 at some point, and at this point Andraken begins to transfer his king over to the queen side with king g2. He wants to come over here 
and help defend these weak pawns with his king, which will free up his queen and bishop to do other things. b6 from Carlson, and here comes the king. At which point, Carlson decides to run his king over to the king's side. It's interesting, the kings are sort of swapping places on the board. King to e8, and now queen to b1. He's looking to activate his bishop. This is going to be the only active diagonal for his bishop if he can get it there. We've got knight to c6, bishop to c1. Carlson plays knight to d8 for whatever reason. Maybe it's just a waiting move. King to d2, defends the pawns. Bishop to b2 from Andraken. This clears the way for the queen to move to h1, perhaps. Maybe she can infiltrate and cause some problems on the h-file. And that move would carry a sneaky threat. That is, queen takes d5. Check, because this pawn cannot reap capture, being pinned to the king. But Carlson prevents that move from being played for the moment with the move queen b5, which hits the bishop and pins it to the queen. So Andre can place queen to c1. This is a good move. It supports bishop to a3, getting on the active diagonal. Queen back to a3, hitting the pawn, bishop to a3. Okay, everything's looking good. King to e8 from Carlson. We got queen to b2. Andraken slowly untangling his position, improving it. King to d7, just kind of a waiting move as far as I can tell. And now here we go with bishop to f8, looking to get into this beautiful f6 post, when that bishop has dramatically improved its activity compared to what it was doing only a few moves earlier. King to e8 hits the bishop, bishop to g7, knight back to c6, bishop to f6, and now queen to a5. With the sneaky threat of knight takes d4, this pawn being pinned to the king cannot defend. Andraken's rated over 3,000 though, he's not going to miss that. He plays king to e3, but this is where Andraken begins to drift a little bit. The king is no longer protecting c3. Instead of moving that king, the engine actually said queen to b1 was better, even letting black take the pawn here because the threat of getting the queen to h1 is so strong. If the queen could get to h8, this would cause black major problems, since we now have a very active bishop involved in the attack. But okay, white's still winning. King to d7, and now another inaccuracy, queen to a1. Andraken's got a good plan here. He wants to play a4, then put his queen on a3 behind the pawn, with some dangerous threats along this diagonal. The only problem is, this plan can be prevented in one move, which is what Carlson does with the move queen to a3. And Andraken, instead of untangling his awkward position here on the queen side, has retangled it. The queen is eyeing c3, it's only defended by the white queen, so king d2 again defends so that this queen is free to go somewhere, but now b5. And things are getting a little spooky. b4 is going to be a problem. But Andraken feels that his threats will be quicker. He plays queen to h1, again threatening to take on d5 since this pawn is pinned to the king, cannot recapture. Carlson, not being one to miss a tactic like that, moves his king out of the way to c7. And at this moment, Andraken has one final chance to maintain his winning position. Best move is to play queen to f3. He needs to defend c3 from the coming b4. But instead, he goes for queen to h7. It's a tempting move. He's going to get a check. After b4, he gets to grab the pawn on f7. Carlson's king goes to b6. But now what? There's no more checks, and he's now got to deal with Carlson's threat of queen takes c3 check, followed by taking the pawn here. He takes on b4. We have queen takes b4 check. King goes to d1. We've got another check from Carlson. King goes to d2. And now a very nice move from Carlson. c3 check. And at this point, with correct play from both sides, the game should end in a draw. Andraken needs to take that pawn, as scary as it seems, allowing queen to b4 check. His king can go to d3. The d4 pawn's going to fall with check. He goes to e2. And then he even loses his bishop with queen to g4 check. But the material has equalized, and Carlson does not have a checkmate here. The king can move to d2, and if black tries to get his knight involved in the attack with something like this, well, this pawn's going to fall. Or white can start harassing the black king with bishop d8 check. And Stockfish says this is a dead draw. But that's not what happened in the game. Andraken was afraid of that variation, and I can't really blame him. And he says, okay, I'm going to put the king on d3. Now what do you got? Well, Carlson has a knight check. Knight to b4, okay. Now he takes the pawn on c3. But this is a different story. And Andraken may have been counting on the fact that his king could take this knight if this queen plays queen takes c2 check, which is what Carlson does. But the problem is, after king takes b4, Carlson does not need that knight in order to end the game. 
Maybe Andraken forgot about this A pawn because now here comes A5 check. His only legal move is king to A3. And now, because he has a pawn on A2, blocking his king's escape route, he will be checkmated with the following sequence. Queen to C3 check. The king can only go to A4. And with the help of that pawn on A5, Carlson now delivers checkmate with queen to B4. So quite a comeback from the great Magnus Carlsen from a dead loss position against one of the strongest blitz players on chess.com and one of the strongest players in the world, Dmitry Andraken. So thank you for watching. Please subscribe to this channel for more content like this coming soon. See you on the next one.